Okay, so um, today uh, I will talk about EPASPY, which is a Python library to process um, EPAS spectral data. So, which uh, who is familiar with Python? Okay, and in computer language? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Python. So it's a bunch of. Um, tool to, uh, to, to do scientific uh, process. Uh, it's, uh, it's really orientated to the scientific work, so it's why it's pretty nice. Um, so Elodie last time talked about R, it's another kind of uh, language, but there is similarity. Um, so uh, there is different uh, way to work with Python. You can just write um, a script in a TXT, uh, uh, file um, and uh, write everything you, you want to do and uh, run it with a terminal. So most of the time I use IPython. And so when you uh, have a Python, you have basic function like uh, addition or <laughs> other stuff. And uh, one uh, one uh, basic tool of Python is the use of a list. So you can uh, create a list um, with several uh, elements and uh, work on this. But uh, with just basic tools, so for example, if you want to add an element in the list I just created, you use a special function. I know you can see that we have the Next one, but uh, uh, Python is organized as um, you download a specific library to to work on. So now I will use a more uh, user friendly um, environment to, to to show you what uh, you can do. It's called uh, Jupyter, and yeah, maybe I can say that uh, to install Python and all its dependency. A cool way to do that is to use Anaconda uh, library. And it's well explained. There is a lot of documentation to do that. And uh, also for Uperspa, you have uh, documentation on the net. And for example, for the installing in Perspy, I think it will. Uh, yeah, it will. He say he's saying that you should go through a conda to install it. Maybe it's a, the better. One. So it's very well explained, uh, depending of uh, if you're on Windows, Mac, Linux, everything. So, and um, which uh, the installation you have the Jupyter uh, notebook. So it's uh, open in a, a navigator, internet navigator, and you can have block of code that you can. Uh, Run. You can run the whole code or just part of it. So here it was just a test to see. Yeah, if I do it one plus one, I have the output too. It's okay. So first of the thing, I download a lot of uh, library. So I commented a lot. It was just to show you what the basic library I'm using. But the one which is uh, useful here, it's IPASPY. So IPASPY with the, a lot of scripts giving you uh, access to tools. Uh, to uh, process uh, uh, spectral data. So there is two ways to uh, download the library. Uh, one way is to uh, use uh, import uh, the name of the libra library you want to download. So here it's epaspy happy. And uh, as I don't want to write every time epaspy happy dot the name of the function, I give it a short name like hs. So other library uh, really useful are NumPy, which allow you to uh, work on the array. And uh, Matplotlib, it's to uh, to have uh, to to plot your result in different uh, uh, form. And there is also a lot of documentation. And uh, Elodie uh, talked last time about another kind of uh, it was Pyplot. Plotly. So I didn't try it, but it seems really cool, and it's another kind of uh, library. And uh, also you have Pandas, which is uh, <laughs> to do some statistical analysis. And uh, SciPy is uh, 
SciPy is a, a lot of useful function for scientific, scientific work, like uh, processing signal uh, or other things. I don't remember exactly. So here I'm uh, loading it, it as file. And uh, we will work on the BCF file. So a broker, um, a, a broker data set. Um, and to load it, I uh, will just say I'm using the, so the hyperspy uh, function, uh, which is for the load. And I put the name. Is it a text file or binary? Uh, uh, it's a binary. The BCF file is a binary uh, broker file. So yeah, you can't open it uh, without the proprietary software unless you're using uh, so yeah, maybe uh, we can have a, a look on the um, on um, so hyperspy is uh, also um, uh, implemented by a community which is working on GitHub, and so you can uh, check here you have the project, and here are all the folder with the different kind of functions. So for example, the IO plugin, it's all the scripts. Uh, people put to read different kind of uh, of uh, and so for example, for example, here you have the broker of uh, uh, which is the um, so when using the loading function, you will see that it's a BCF and use the function here in this file to uh, download the function. And here you have the general ones, which is the one I. Uh, coded for the GM uh, um, data set. So you can see that there is a lot of uh, file you can read with uh, EPUS. Uh, I think there is a um, digital mail program. You can read a DM3 uh, with, uh, with that. Um, so here we have our, um, here we have our object. So I name it S. And if we uh, check what it is, uh, it's a list. You can uh, see the, the bracket here with two items. The first one is uh, images. So uh, 700 uh, pixels to uh, 525 pixels. And the second one is the hypercube. So with the same uh, spatial dimension and uh, more than 4,000 uh, energy. So you can uh, check, for example, your image with the plot function. So yeah, um, in Python, the object can have associated um, function. So here, uh, s underscore image is the name I gave to the first object of the list. So the this object and as this object uh, uh, is a hyperspy object. It comes with a, um, a set of uh, functions that I can use, and plot is one of this. So if you see, that's my data. So uh, he, re he, he reads um, the type of the data, it's a bear signal, and he uh, use, um, use um, the scale to, to to give the dimension of the object. So you can see that it's a thin section of, uh, I think it was hydrothermal kidney. And uh, you see that there is different phases, mineral phases here. So this is just the images, the image, but we can check the second object, the hypercube. And when you do use the same uh, plot function, you will have two outputs. So it's very old computer, it's very slow. So it reads the scale in the, in the BCF, right? Yeah. The BCF, right? And exactly. it, it looks accurate, right? Oh, yeah. In fact, the scale is uh, digitally written in the. In yeah, the yeah, I so it's the same you will have on broker. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand. But it, I mean, so the, you just have to be careful that you have communication with the scan and so on. Sure. Just in case. If you have any problem. Sure. For for example, when I uh, when I um, 
call it the GL part. Uh, mm. I can read the scale, which is uh, written by uh, analysis station, mm. but the state is not calibrated. So I have a scale. It's the same that you can see in analysis station, but uh, when you see uh, the corresponding images, mm. the scale is totally different. Mm. So uh, I have the two objects. So it's a, it, this is a sum uh, on the uh, energy axis. So you will, it looks like the, uh, the images acquired uh, in ABS mode. So, and you can see that here there is a lot of, uh, of counts and here there is no lot of counts. And here I have the associated spectrum of the pixel, pixel in a zero, zero position. So I can move it with the arrow, I can drag it with the, with the mouse and explore my data set. But you see that as it's on each pixel and you don't have a full spectrum on each pixel, it's not really useful because you most of the time are two counts or three. So you can't really uh, see interesting thing here. You can select a window. So there is a people working to, because here when I put plus, I just increase the, 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 the images to drag it, but it not integrate the pixel uh, and, uh, underneath. But there is people working to have a, a variable array to to do it uh, simple to sum the spectra yeah from the from zero to six. Mm. Okay. but um, so I close it and one of the cool stuff is that you can uh, transpose your object so here I call the same uh, EDS supermap and I use T to transpose it and then I plot it. So now I will move on the energy, all the, all the pixels will be sum to a wall spectrum and I will see the associated maps. So that's really cool to check where your elements. So here is my spectrum and here is a sum of that's the sum of all your pieces. Yeah. The so, yeah. First, you sum all the energy and you will uh, see the associated spectrum. No, it's uh, transposed. So maybe I will zoom here because we have a lot of energy which aren't interesting. So here is here is my pixel, uh, my spectrum, and I can also drag the energy. And if I go here in structure, for example, I can see where is the structure. Do you see something on the? Yeah. Uh, yeah, on the computer, it's OK. OK. Yeah, no, and if we uh, close the. Maybe. Uh, yeah. yeah, so because it's, uh, yeah, gray. Uh, Yeah, Juliet on the computer can see it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's not the best uh, thing, but uh, your your spectrum here is corrected from the branch training or no? It's uh, here. It's a raw data. Okay. But uh, you know maybe Pierre Marizanta. He wrote some script to uh, do a branch challenge okay. pro correction. So if you go on is is plus by uh, deposit uh, repository. Mm -hmm. You can download his, um, his file to uh, to do the correction. Okay. He tried also to integrate it to the world project, but I think uh, he still has work to do before the, the function will be added. Okay. So yeah, so you don't see anything, but <laughs> here you have the sulfur, and maybe you can uh, move uh, on the calcium, and it will be uh, other spots here. You can see, but it's only in the uh, right then, you have uh, an, an area out uh, the kitchen. So that's cool to quickly check where are uh, distributed your elements. And now if you going on the wall spectra, you will see that you have different elements, iron, zinc, calcium, sulfur, 
which are uh, distributed in uh, different arrays. So this okay. And so if you put true in the plot option, we'll have the labeled elements which will be plotted uh, on the spectrum. So I'm not saying yes. That's it. Okay, no problem. So you can also access to the metadata of your file. So it's a selection of the of the, the metadata which are interesting, like the elements which were uh, selected in the breaker. You have, uh, I think, the scale, the energy you're using. Yeah, so you have different. Uh, so here you have aluminum, carbon, calcium, copper, etc. You have uh, the name of the file, the time, the, so, and here it's just a selection, but you also can access to the whole metadata. Uh, yeah, so here you have all the uh, data which are uh, saved in the group profile. So if you want to go for so in the PCF, uh, yeah. In the PCF. In the PCF. You no, know, I was wondering so the selected elements of the this are the yeah. The selected say the, the one that you select uh, yeah. during the, the experiment. Exactly. So when you uh don't allow the you reopen your project, it's, it's uh, you don't yeah, have to do it. But, yes. but so if you uh, didn't uh maybe if you forgot uh, an element. You can, yeah. Okay. So here is a function to. Um, so here you can add a new element. So it's a function add elements. And uh, there is uh, two uh, stuff uh, in hyperspy. There is the elements and the X-ray line. So when you add the elements, for example, here I put uh, sodium chloride. After I have to uh, to uh, to set the corresponding lines to the new elements, uh, unless he, he won't uh, put it on the spectrum. Um, so here. So here I'm creating a, a spectrum just to check where are the elements. Okay. Okay, so here you have the elements we were uh, saved in the breaker file, and you can see that they are missing uh, some here and here. So I can add uh, sodium and chloride. Some, uh, Here you have sodium and chloride. Okay, so another, another thing you can do is to download the maps because um, uh, so you didn't saw it, saw it on the interactive plot, but you have the elements uh, in different parts, so you can download the maps you, you want. So when you have um, 
when you have uh, selected a different line, you can use a function get line intensity to uh, extract the elemental map. There is option, I think, uh, to uh, change the window or the energy if you want to do something very specific. But by default, there is a database of each uh, ray line energy. So it works pretty well. So here I have the different uh, maps of all the elementary selected. So, okay. How does it define the, the energy range for each element? It's, uh, so, it's somewhere in the yeah. Here, Library. there is a folder, uh, which is called, I think it's util. And in and you have material. And so I think it's this script where you have a big dictionary with all the elements and the useful value. So this one. Model, model. Risk, risk. I don't remember exactly where it is, but there is a file where um, so it defines a certain energy range for each element and you can change that, right? Yeah. Okay. So So let's back on the images. Maybe it's better than on the interactive part. But here you can see, so for all the elements, you can see where it is. So you can see that the, oh, maybe I should put the, the map, the image too. Oh, well, here it is. So here you have the image. And here you have the map. So you can see that the black area are mostly carbon. It's uh, the, uh, the, the, the resin used for the preparation. Uh, here is a gray, dark gray area. It's mostly calcium and uh, uh, sulfur. So it might be uh, gypsum. And the light gray. There is two kinds of light gray. The really light one, it's uh, so it's go uh, it go out on sodium, but in fact, the L ray of uh, zinc is uh, really close to the sodium. So in fact, it's more uh, sphalerite uh, than sulfide, and uh, around the sphalerite part, the other gray. It's uh, iron sulfide, iron. So you can see the, uh, the iron map here. And that's uh, just a uh, pixel around the zinc one. So yeah, here you can see that there is mostly uh, four faces on your sample, three minerals plus the, the resin. So you can have a look on the, the, the sample like that, but a thing you can do is to uh, automatic, automatically process uh, data using uh, uh, PCR, okay? And to do that, okay, so first, uh, to, to work on the, the PCR, what you have to do is not to work on the wall data, because as you see, there was some energy which weren't useful. You don't need to look what is uh, above uh, 10, uh, 10 uh, kilovolts in our case. And also you have to uh, don't sample your, uh, 
your uh, your hyper uh, cube because as you see on each pixel you only have few counts so it's not a spectrum and to do the PCI you have to you need to have um, a spectrum like data so here I reload the sample the, the data but I using done sample to merge uh, to to do uh, a 10 billion so it will uh, being 10 on 10 uh, pixels. So I will have 100 uh, points on each new pixel. And I use a cutoff to uh, not download the energy above 10. So I can download it. You will see that the... So you see that the image is decreased. And here you have pixel, uh, spectrum like on each pixel. And so when you go, for example, here, you see that you have calcium sulfur so, and oxygen, so maybe uh, gypsum. Here you have mostly zinc and uh, sulfur. And here you have the high one and sulfur. Okay, and here you have the carbon. So here, okay, one minute here. So I um, uh, the thing is uh, on the. Uh, on the Brugger file, the, the format of the data are integral. And now I just change it to float to do uh, other kind of operation, uh, not just addition. So I change it to float. And now I use the decomposition. And and it's slow. Okay, I, I just, something I'm talking. Okay, he did, he did it. And I can plot the, so it will look familiar to Elodie. <laughs> so here <laughs> has a main, uh, contribution of raw data. So you can see that there is mostly five uh, five vex for which can explain uh, raw data. And so if I so here I will do a blind source separation and I will put four components and I see what Okay, one exit, no problem. Okay. And so here there is a different maps normally. Okay. So First uh, map he found it was so Zeus area and after the zinc sulfide, the gypsum, the carbon. So if you worked on the axis uh, or uh, uh, sticks and uh, data, it's the same. So you have the the. The, different, the contribution of uh, each vector on the map, and then you can uh, put a threshold to see uh, what are the interesting uh, areas. Yeah. Is it the, um, the uh, components of the scene? Yeah. yeah. And each component is, is a um, linear chain of exactly. initial elements. 
Yeah, the problem is when you check the spectrum. Uh, so here, the, it's not uh, the components. I mean, they are yeah, they are not real spectra. No, I mean, they are the principal mm. components. Yeah, and then uh, on each pixel, I guess you sum up. Uh, you have a linear combination of your principal components. Yeah, and that now it's a spectrum. I guess you get the but um, yeah, yeah, it's not the elements. No, no. Okay. And so, yeah, there is other uh, um, kind of uh, work to uh, you, you can do. Uh, so I think in uh, I'll, I'll check here. The data is in English. So the documentation is really useful to uh, to yeah to have a look of uh, what stuff you can do and how to. So here is showing how to uh, have a two uh, pixel marker to compare spectrum when you have. Uh, so here is for Hills analysis. Um, one, I want to show you that. Yeah, this okay. Here, so it's a, a code that um, extracts the different uh, spectrum of uh, core shell uh, material, and so you can see that the core are a copper, uh, no, are platinum based, and the shell are iron based. So you can work on the spectrum and. Here, I think it's not doing PCI, you just mask part of the data and, uh, and use it to plot a selected array. So, and it's, it's a, a composite image. Okay. So, I think it's. A... So, you can identify which region of the spectrum are correlated. Which region of the spectrum? Uh, yeah, I'm not, um, not sure to understand what are the um, variables and what are the observations in your data. The observations are the spectrum and yeah. the variable are each pixel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and the... Okay, so you can group the pixel corresponding to a given yeah, exactly. direction. Yeah. And okay. the thing is, I am not uh, most of the time not using the automatic uh, decomposition yeah. because uh, I used to work on sample quite easy yeah. to uh, process. And what I I did is just uh, selected the uh, mask area. Uh, basing, for example, of the darkness of the image, and use all these pixels to uh, to compute the associated spectrum, and to uh, to have um, to have the yeah the spectrum of the, the data. And it was really useful because, for example, I used to work on really tiny material, and instead of doing each uh, um, I have small objects, so few pixels, and instead of uh, doing all uh, uh, by hand uh, area to have the city spectrum, I just uh, automatically say, okay, that's a light uh, point. I just uh, extract it and uh, sum all the, the the energy and show me what the spectrum looks like. And I can compile highlights, phosphate, all this stuff. And here can it's, um, so database for the elements. So it's uh, it's uh, uh, alphabetically uh, sorted. Um, so it's materials dot elements, and you have so the different line and the weight. I think the weight is uh, ah okay the width <laughs> the width yeah and they call weight uh, okay no, uh, no I guess it's not no it's all uh, other thing okay. But yeah, you can modify it. Okay, so yeah, but so this is great. Uh, so that means uh, at least uh, from what you showed is that uh, at least we can uh, read and uh, and get uh, and transfer data from the 
because it, the, the problem with those formats is that they, they are appropriate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bootcamp, for example, software is 1,000 euros. Yes, and, and for the GL, for example, uh, there's a CD to install it, but it, um, it doesn't work anymore on Windows, I think. Or... No, it works. It only works on Windows 95. It doesn't work on Windows anymore. So, so at least okay. Then there is a lot of fun. There are a lot of functions that you can use to process the data. But at least you can also start reading that stuff and then yeah, put yeah. it in something that is uh, okay. Use using basic function. Yeah, uh, okay. I'll check something because. So here is on the GitHub, you also can do requests. For example, uh, um, here there is a thing which uh, report a bug. So he, he, uh, he opened it. I don't remember the, the name and the people. Uh, here it's uh, closed, so correct it. And uh, as, as George, uh, I wanted to. I think, yeah, this one was interesting. So a uh, few uh, months after um, I put, uh, I put uh, the code, there is a guy we, um, which can, because on the GL, you can have a fourth dimension object. You can have the uh, spatial, XY, energy, but also the sweep. And what he, uh, for his work, what he was uh, doing is that uh, he is doing a really long uh, acquirement and there was a drift at the beginning and at the end. So he didn't want to uh, to solve all the sweep to one object. He wanted to uh, remove the um, uh, unwanted uh, sweep. And uh, so he called uh, an implement. And no, you can do that. I have to read how to do that, but you can select that I want uh, this suite. And JR also saves uh, images when you uh, when you uh, select the um, correction. The, yeah, correct the DC. Yeah, it saves an image, and so you can compare oh, okay. the images to yeah. to to check. Okay, this one drift, so I can remove uh, all the all the stuff and just keep this one and this one. So that could be useful when you have. Uh, uh, data and you don't want to trash everything. Okay. Also, okay. So thanks, uh, no, I think it's convincing that uh, <laughs> it can be useful. Of course, uh, if we want to learn more, uh, probably require more time. But uh, I think it's a it's a nice introduction to the fact that this exists and we can do that. Uh, maybe the last thing because many people don't really want to be. Uh, Coding with a terminal and text, and there is also a project with on um, uh, which is um, a graphical uh, interface. So it's Hyperspy GUI. I'm not sure I download it, but I can try. Um, okay, let's try it if it's working. No, I'm not, I didn't install it, but yeah, you can uh, design your code with boxes and, and arrows. Yeah, and I I think I used to install it to check how it was working, and it was yeah. So you are you have uh, the element table, and you can click on an element and. He uh, show you uh, the asset in map directly, and um, yeah, that could be uh, an entry door for people who want to try it as by, but not uh, putting the hand on the in the code. <laughs> okay, so thanks.